Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Saturday here in Australia and the market is still just going. Some coins are performing out of this world and I just can't believe this market cap. It is absolutely flying. We were struggling to get, you know, kind of stay over anyway, the one trillion dollar mark maybe seven days ago and we have almost doubled that in a week. We are now getting so close to two trillion. Have a look at Bitcoin's market cap. It has hit a trillion dollars. It is over a trillion dollars. Things are just moving and there's still so much bullish news. <sighs> this space, I mean, who wouldn't want to be in it right now? Now again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but when things you know pump like this, just be reminded that there's likely going to be a heavy retracement at some stage. Doesn't mean it's the end of the bull run, but hey, look, we could have a 30, 40, 50% correction tomorrow. Doesn't mean it's over. It could mean it's over. I think that's unlikely. But look, it's also just as likely at the moment that things continue to go the way they are. We haven't really seen a weekend retracement yet, so we still may see that over the next few days. I wouldn't expect it to be too big. But look, now that I've said that, it'll probably be something massive if there is one. But, you know... And that just goes to show no one really knows. There's a lot of people out there who'll pretend like they do know. It, it, it's all a guess. And some of it is definitely an educated guess. And I'd like to think, you know, that's what I do, give a fairly educated guess after a few years in the space. But to actually say I really know what's going to happen, no, I don't know. But my gut feeling, you know, my waters are telling me that I think we have a lot more to go. And I did put out a tweet earlier saying, I mean, look how well things are doing now. Imagine if this does run until December this year, or even more scary, runs until you know March next year. And even more scary, some people are saying a prolonged sort of you know bull run, which March next year would be. But imagine it's like a multi-year bull run. So we're talking December next year. I would hate to think what the prices. Well, not I would hate to think, but I couldn't imagine what the prices would be then. But let's have a look. You know, this just continues to grow. Bitcoin dominance is falling, but Bitcoin is still rising. So that is uh, very interesting. ETH dominance is dropping though. And I think a lot of that has to do with the gas prices. And we're going to talk about that very shortly. A lot of people are jumping ship and going over to Binance chain at the moment. And, you know, Polkadot, same thing. Cardano, once they fully roll it out and have decentralized apps, you know, particularly DeFi on Cardano, Ethereum, and, and I think they know what's coming and they are starting to move on that already. And we will have a look at a story about that very shortly. But, you know, the gas prices, again, that's just way too high. It's, you know, 40, 50 bucks for a basic transaction and then some if you want to do something on DeFi. You know, yeah, horrendous. But anyway, let's have a look. What's really pumped? I'm going to say Binance Coin is going to be up there. And there we go, 70% in the last 24 hours. Wow. I had Binance coin, I got it at $40. Uh, I eventually sold it because it just wasn't doing anything. And now I'm you know, kicking myself just a little bit. But in saying that, you know, some of the other coins that I've been in, so $40 to here really is, you know, it's not even a 10x yet. I've had coins that have gone well over a 10x, so I can't complain. I've had coins that ha have done not as good that I'm still holding as well. So that's just the name of the game. You can't pick all the winners and never have any sort of losers. And I have had a couple of losers, but I've had coins that definitely have performed better and coins that have performed uh, a lot worse. But well done to Binance Chain. And from what I've heard, the fees are almost nothing and that's what ethereum needs to get onto or they will just lose a lot more market share all right okb wow huobi ren has been absolutely pumping i'm so glad i held on to my ren and i i didn't falter uh, i'm not even sure you know what percentage i'm up right now but you know i doubled down on it a few times i i thought it was getting to a point where it was going to bounce i bought in it went lower <laughs> I thought another time was coming in where it was going to bounce. Uh, I bought in, it went lower, and then I, well, I basically tripled down 
and I am lucky that you know that tripling down again I'd have to have a look but at the moment I think I must be doing quite well I don't know if I've quite hit a 10x on my REN yet but I will have to go check but I know it's doing quite well at the moment I mean MDEX that was way outside of the top 100 and it's made its way in Ravencoin out of nowhere haven't heard much from that again pancake swap is just absolutely flying polygon so we've got some more polygon ie matic news uh, to have a look at so they are doing extremely well they continue to pump voyager token again i remember this was under a dollar and people were talking about it uh, and i'm wishing i had it got in right now because that's a you know a pretty good pump but anyway as i said you can't get them all you're just you're never going to be able to get them all and you know i've got coins that have performed a lot better than you know just a 5x or a 6x or a 10x so i can't complain all right what about losses though in the top 100 do we have any big losses not really i mean bancor yeah that would suck that they lost 11 percent, but you're still up 60 percent in seven days so you know you wouldn't be complaining about that now the graph has started to come down has started to sell off and look i'm okay with that because i am going to look for a bottoming in the graph and i absolutely plan to buy in same as l elrond uh I missed the original pump, so I am waiting to see if there's another good buy-in spot. And that's what I'm looking for a lot of these. I'm going to go through the charts and just try and find where do I think this is going to come down to and where would be a good entry point because I don't think this is the end. This is just the coins that pumped really hard like about a week or two or three ago. They are now having their retracements and the ones that hadn't pumped are the ones that we were looking at before that are now pumping. That's just the cycles. So yes, these will sell off. What their low point is, I don't know. Again, you'd have to go back and have a look at the charts and sort of map out some, you know, old support levels uh, where it might come down to or old resistance levels that maybe now become support. So that's something I'll definitely do probably tomorrow. And I, make my, I might make my video about that. I've been having a look at some coins. So there are some losses, but nothing big. I mean, you know, 7%, that's not so bad. And even 12%, you know, 13% for Swiss Borg. I'm sure they had a massive pump in the last few weeks. So yeah, none of these losses are overly bad. And look, even Curve Dow, you know, down sort of 20 three percent over seven days i reckon if you go back before that it probably pumped nearly 100 percent, if not more so losses and gains you know you have to be able to take the losses with the gains and hopefully you sold when things were a little bit exuberant and then hopefully if you believe in the project and it wasn't just a quick flip like maybe the graph you're looking for a new buy-in point we'll have to wait and see all right let's go over and have a look at the bitcoin chart and just have a look how well this thing's doing right now this is doing quite well. Now, it did bounce nicely off that 50-day, and that's how you know we are still in a very bullish trend if it comes down and bounces off the 50. But we can still be in a bull market if it comes down and bounces off the 200-day moving average. Now, people would lose their minds if Bitcoin came down to $20,000 at the moment. But that would be a great buy-in point, provided it wasn't literally the end of the bull market, because then it could go a lot lower. But if it were to come down and sort of bounce off the 200-day moving average, then that would be a very bullish signal again. Yep, there was a steep correction. They happen in bull markets. But then if it did bounce and just start to go up, that would be a great buy-in price. And again, here's this little line I drew. I mean, it's, you know, it's way above this at the moment. So things are pretty exuberant, and that's what makes me just at least somewhat cautious that we could have a correction. And it could happen this weekend. And maybe we break through and come back down and touch this, you know, 50-day moving average, maybe even the 100-day moving average. And again, not as likely, but not completely impossible that we couldn't come back and touch this 200-day moving average. I just don't see that happening at the moment. And we'll have a look at some of these stories, which will explain why. All right, number one, we'll start off with a little bit of not great news, but I guess it depends on how you look at it. So Janet Yellen stresses importance of crypto regulation, making sure Bitcoin is not used in illicit transactions. I completely agree. But because Bitcoin can be traced and all that, I think criminals are less likely to use 
cryptocurrencies and that has been shown over a while now that less and less nefarious acts are happening with cryptocurrencies because it can be traced they're more likely to do it with cash and i'm sure they're not coming up with new regulations for cash anymore it is just literally you know a bit of fud people getting you know told that oh we've got to make sure it's safe and that's most likely because central banks and other big people are now trying to buy into it with a little bit of this fud uh, to get in nice and early because they don't want to come out and say yes we believe this is the future it's easier to track criminals because ever and everyone because then excuse me everyone goes it's safe and they pile into it and you know these people and big businesses and governments and that can't buy at the cheap prices not that they're probably considering bitcoin cheap right now but cheaper prices so it is something so it says here i think it's important to make sure that it is not used as a vehicle for illicit transactions and that there's investor protection 100 percent. I'm, I'm complete in agreement with that no doubt about it and so regulating institutions that deal in bitcoin making sure that they adhere to their regulatory responsibilities i think is certainly important and i agree with that i do think we need kyc i think we need to know you know who's associated with what and where it's going i don't have a problem with anyone knowing what i'm doing with my money i have a problem with them stopping me from doing what i want to do with my money unless it's an illegal transaction but them knowing what I'm, you know, how I spend my money, I, I don't really care. Like, it's my money. Uh, you know, as long as you're not telling me, no, you can't do that, we don't like that person. Again, outside of it being completely criminal and all the rest of it, I'm not too worried. And it is just the way of the future. We're moving to a digital age anyway. So regardless of whether you really like or agree with it, it's going to happen regardless you know there will be digital dollars that are going to come out with every country around the world in the not too distant future and it will be tracked and here's the thing anyway unless you are 100 percent cash if you've got a debit card credit card or anything like that and you use it to shop online or tap and go or swipe and go whatever they call it where you are you've left an imprint they already know how you're spending your money it's just we haven't really thought about it and talked about it too much lately so yes this is a little bit of fud as well and especially the way they put this picture here you know it makes it seems like oh god you know let's be worried and i'm not having a go at bitcoin.com it's probably a funny somewhat you know satirical image that they decided to put up of her but it does sort of create a little bit of fud as well for people they look and go oh so there's problems with bitcoin and we need to make sure that it's safe so it's not yet safe no, it is safe if you've done some research. If you haven't done some research, more than not safe part is you might accidentally send it to an Ethereum wallet and lose it all. And then the other not safe part is maybe you get scammed out of it. But yeah, for me, generally, I'd say Bitcoin is pretty safe. But with anything, there's always, you know, elements that aren't as safe. So do your research first. All right. Mr. Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, I'm not sure how I say that, but very, very interesting. He did come out a while ago and said he wants half of his pay to be put in Bitcoin. And I think he makes about $13, sorry, $13, $13 million salary a year. Half of that into Bitcoin back in December. Well, look how well Bitcoin's done since then. So at the end of December, the Carolina Panthers offensive lineman, Russell Okong, told the public that he would be getting half of his $13 million salary paid in Bitcoin. Moreover, Okung made the decision at the same time as the National Football League just capped the league's salaries at $180 million. Looking at it from a different perspective, some people think that Okung is now the highest uh, salary NFL player today because of his decision to stack Satoshis. I'm not sure if he'd be the highest. I reckon there'd be some other players that are probably on a lot more. And I think there was plenty of other players who just didn't come out and publicly say that they were putting half their money into Bitcoin, but were still putting money into Bitcoin. So it'd be interesting to see if he was there. But hey, it's looking like he's made a really smart decision now. But when the next bear market comes, obviously his net wealth will severely decline and maybe by 50 to 80%. But I guess if he's done his research, he knows, yep, there might be two years, three years where I lose some money, but then it's going to go up exponentially in sort of four or five years' time again. So, yeah, hopefully he's done his research and he understands, and I'm sure he probably has and probably does. All right, so this is pretty bullish. Rev Motorsport ecosystem shifts to Polygon slash Matic due to Ethereum gas fees. And again, this is a massive issue, the gas fees. They have to get onto this 
or again Binance Chain, Cardano, Polkadot, Cosmos, they will all just eat into Ethereum. Ethereum will quickly lose that network effect that it has. And they already are starting to lose it. And you can see by how well Binance Chain did. All right, so the publisher of F1 Delta Time, uh, Animica Brands announced a partnership with Ethereum Layer 2 solution Polygon on February 18th. Under the partnership, the entity of Rev Token Motorsport ecosystem will be deployed on the Polygon network, starting with the aforementioned, uh, sorry, aforementioned F1 Delta Time. This will ensure that players are not hampered by excessive gas fees on the Ethereum blockchain. High gas fees can cripple blockchain-based games, as many in-game actions require performing a transaction to complete. Yes, and they are actually getting paid to play the game sometimes. You know, they see reach certain levels and achievements and things, and so they get rewards for it. But if that's basically all being chewed up by gas fees, I mean, even half or a quarter of it being chewed up by gas fees, kind of makes it not worth it for most people unless someone's making you know big dollars then yeah they probably don't care too much but if you're only making a couple of dollars and particularly if a couple of dollars won't even cover the gas fee then that's why people are going to leave so congratulations to uh, Rev for partnering up with Polygon slash Matic Network which I am super bullish on and I'm glad I stuck with them uh, and didn't sell out when I did I considered it a couple of times at the very least now this is pretty out there. So OKCoin to delist BCH and BSV to protect Bitcoin from Craig Wright's malicious information war. The popular crypto exchange OKCoin has made a somewhat controversial decision to list two Bitcoin forks, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. According to the platform CEO, the company is doing what's in the best interest of Bitcoin's ecosystem or trying to act against Craig Wright's recent lawsuit, urging various websites to remove the BTC white paper. So that is pretty out there. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff about BSV. Uh, and I suppose even Bitcoin Cash, but you know, Bitcoin Cash has been around for a while. Uh, it was interesting that they went after Bitcoin Cash as well, but I suppose considering BSV is a fork of Bitcoin Cash, which is then a fork of Bitcoin, it probably makes sense that you can't really go after BSV and not go after Bitcoin Cash. You know, I wonder if this is something that will continue on and other exchanges will do the same. Not so sure, but hey, look, very interesting, and it's going to hurt people who have uh, BSV tokens and definitely going to hurt people who have Bitcoin Cash tokens, and particularly if other exchanges follow suit. That really will be um, yeah, painful for those people. You know, I, I had a few BSV earlier, well, not earlier this year, sort of later last year, uh, and I just sold them straight away. I just didn't believe it, and, and I'm not really all that into Bitcoin Cash too either. I like Roger Fur, and, you know, he, he's... He's a smart man and he's invested in a lot of other things. You don't hear too much about Bitcoin Cash anymore anyway. Like he's not out there pumping it like he used to. So maybe he's sort of moved on from the project. Uh, I'm not sure, but yeah. Interesting times. And if you do have, you know, Bitcoin Cash or BSV, then that's probably going to hurt a little bit. So here we go. Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Binance Coin flips Tether with 40% surge to $250. It skyrocketed up the rank. Let's go back here and have a look. I think it's like number three now. It is number three. This was like around number 10. Like it was inside the top 10. It has absolutely jumped. Like everyone thought Chainlink was going to do it. And Binance Coin has just rocketed. And look, it will start to gain on Ethereum. And it's not that far off. Like in grand scheme of things, you know, 223 million, uh, yep, 223 million dollar market cap. Binance coin at uh, 51 million dollar market cap. I think that is, yeah, because that's, yep, 51 million dollar market cap. It only really needs to kind of 5x from here and then it will get Ethereum. Now that's, you know, easy, easier said than done, but it's really not that hard. So Ethereum needs to get onto this. Now, this is why I think this is being moved up. So Ethereum core developers eye mid-April for Berlin hard fork. So Ethereum developers have scheduled the Berlin hard fork for April 14th at block 
at block height 12,244,000, according to Ethereum All Core Development Developers Meeting Friday. And I think they saw what is happening, you know, with these other platforms. They're just gaining too much steam, and Ethereum really, they have to hurry up and move on this. They can't wait. Now, the hard fork includes various optimizations for contracts, including gas efficiencies. It will be interesting to see how much of a difference these gas efficiencies will make. Updates to how code is read by Ethereum virtual machine and other changes to protect against denial of service attacks. Now, I'm sure uh, EIP uh, 1599 or whatever that one is, I can't remember the name off the top of it, uh, is not far off as well. I just, I'm not sure if it's going to be part of this. I was pretty sure I thought that was coming out later in the year, but we'll have to wait and see. And again, this was originally uh, going to come out later in the year and they have moved it up and I do think it's because people are starting to move away from Ethereum. The gas fees are just, they're too much. Only institutional users can kind of handle that. Anyone else, they can't. And they are literally jumping ship to Polkadot, to Cardano, to Binance Chain. All right, last but not least. So Elon Musk, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin advocates have laser eyes, advocates have laser eyes on Twitter. So I did see this and I was wondering what it was all about. What's this whole laser thing about? So if you like, if you were like me and weren't quite sure what it was all about, it's meant to convey activation and growing power levels. I wasn't sure what it was. I was like, is this like something to do with something evil and all the rest of it? And where's, there it is. So it is just basically, you know, people are getting more and more bullish about Bitcoin. Uh, and now I get it. Yeah, it, it makes sense. At first, I didn't understand it. And I literally had no clue. And I was like, what's that all about? I just don't understand it. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Again, everyone should be on that gain train at the moment. The market is absolutely pumping. And I hope you're part of it. And I'll see you next time.